What's up guys and welcome back to the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host Andrew from Coaster Thrills joined by my co-host Caleb from Backyard Thrills. Caleb, how you doing today? I'm doing great today Andrew. We've got another jam-packed episode for you guys and we're really excited to bring all of this to you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I feel like every single time we do an episode, you're like jam packed, which I mean, it's true. It, re- <laughs> it really is true. That's for sure. But uh, it's going to be a jam packed episode. Come on. I mean, yeah, to try to condense all of our like thoughts and everything into one hour of a podcast. Plus, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to do that, especially when you're going unscripted here. Yeah, I know. It's like we like we're trying to find like a balance still like in between the two. I mean, I've I feel like we've uh, got done, done pretty successful so far. I feel like the last episode was really good. Don't you agree? Yeah, I think the last episode was really good. Um, we are doing this one apart again. Uh, but yeah, we are super excited to bring you that quality content that you guys all enjoy from us. But Quality. Yes, quality it, content. It, 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 nothing, nothing else than quality. I mean, come on. <laughs> yep we, only we the, are we, only the best for you guys yes we are quality i mean you know i'm here i'm you know drinking my schweppes ginger ale uh not sponsored by schweppes but like you know this is really really good ginger ale do you like ginger ale caleb yes i do andrew i love me some ginger ale i, I know like i'm sh- gonna say it in like country accent ginger ale Gene, ginger ale <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. i love me some ginger ale <laughs> Schweppes is the best ginger ale. Like, don't come at me, but like, come on, it's way better than Canada Dry. I mean, come on, like, no I prefer question. Canada Dry. How? How do you prefer Canada Dry? Well, it's kind of like how I prefer Coke Starlight over Coke. You know what I mean? I mean, the cotton candy aspect to it is good, but I kind of like the OG Coke a little bit better. But I, um, I think the OG Coke kind of drains out my throat. Like, it dries out my throat so badly that I just, like, can't speak for, like, 30 seconds after, not 30 seconds, but, like, you know, 30 minutes after I drink it, like, I can't speak and get that out of my throat properly. <laughs> Wait, what, isn't your, what is your favorite type of Coke? It's, like, cherry Coke or whatever, what is it? It is cherry vanilla Coke, and I used to get it from Bucky's all the time because they had those flavor shots, but they took them away. Oh, uh, well, at least they have the cotton candy, like, there's mints. Come on. I still have like so many of these mints. Like it is absolutely crazy. Like I have like some like four cotton candy ones. I'm probably not going to finish them for a while. And we got like a peppermint mint. Caleb, do you still have any of those? Yes, I do have some of those still, but uh, my family has devoured all of them. I got like 10 of them whenever I went to Bucky's. And uh, yeah, we uh, have my family has devoured all of them. Most of them. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, most of them. Most of them. I mean, they are really good. So <laughs> you cannot blame them because everything Bucky's so, hey, is no so good. No complaints there. Uh, probably like by now, like by this podcast, if it comes out by like, uh, we're filming this on Thursday, of course. So once it comes out on Sunday, um, you will ha- you will have uh already seen or if you have seen it, it is out by now. Um, the new Caro Trip vlog coming out this Saturday. So um. You will see that we got mints in those cotton candy mints, and you will see that um, we went to Bucky's like we went to Bucky's three times on that trip, and Bucky's is the place to go. And like, especially on the Texas trip uh, later uh, uh, this summer, uh, we're gonna be going to so many Bucky's. I have we have like so many Bucky's planned like all across Texas. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Okay, Andrew. Let's uh, let's. Uh... You know, um, also, tip, don't eat too many of them at once. <laughs> we, Me and Andrew learned that the hard way. Uh, if you say so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, so excited for the Texas trip. We mention this every podcast. It's kind of like a tradition. Uh, I mean, just, we're really excited to get, like, that, um, the results of the trip, like, once you already go in, you can get it on this podcast. But uh, since we've gone through all of this, uh, let's jump in to the first segment of the podcast, the news. So to start off uh, with this, um, this week, even though we kind of skipped the last week episode, you know, we're a little inconsistent, so we're a little bit sorry about that. But um, yeah, uh, since we skipped it, uh, you know, you would probably expect that there is um, 
you know, more news, but uh, no. We didn't <laughs> find uh, any. Yeah, there's barely any news, and if the new, I think we actually might have mentioned some of this in the other podcast, but um, I guess we'll go more in depth on it. I mean, we got some more Disney, some more cool stuff with this, but uh, for our first bit of news, um, I think we mentioned this in the other podcast, so it'll probably be a little bit shorter of a, of a little part of the news, but uh, Bush Gardens Tampa is building that new entrance, which um, something it's, it looks really cool. Obviously, the new design is going to be really cool, um, but um, yeah, something that we have seen, we do see with the entrance sign is the Kumba, uh, I think, is still in the picture. So that really gives us a grasp on the idea that Kumba will stay, and it's really great that it will stay. Yeah, I definitely agree, Then uh, Kumba in that uh, picture art does mean that it is going to stay for the long haul. Or at least if they do have plans to remove it, you'll probably see it removed from the entrance be one of the first things removed of Kumba. I mean, I, I guess that might be what it might be to. But um, yeah, no, this entrance looks fantastic as, you know, BGT really is putting into a lot of money since Iron Gwazi has come out into the guest experience as they also are building a new pass holder lounge at BGT which I am really excited for because I love me some pass holder lounges. Yeah, I mean, the SeaWorld pass holder lounge, <laughs> I have actually have a story from that, but the SeaWorld pass holder lounge is nice. So it'd be really nice uh, for it to go to uh, Bush Gardens Tampa, which was really funny. Like, I just went to SeaWorld um, this past Monday, you know, um, got some new cool on rides of, like, reels. If you go on my Insta got all that stuff got to ride mako icebreaker all of those cool rides but it was like a really dead day so like i went to the pass holder lounge and dude like i was the only one in it and like it was like so nice it's just a, a break from the park i just walked in you know got my fanta sat back relaxed nobody in there it was so nice um it's very rare that you'll see that pass holder lounge empty so um you know, hopefully we'll get the same stuff at Bush Gardens because I feel like even at Bush Gardens it'll be really nice too. Like those pass holder lounges, pass holder lounges, are great breaks from the day you would already be experiencing at the park. But uh, for our next bit of news, um, GCI, as you all know, um, they have a Titan Track, which uh, we have some news on that. Um, they have the Titan Track at an, a new unknown location. So uh, who knows? Uh, we obviously knew that the Titan track would be coming uh, sometime soon, but we actually uh, now have a confirmation that it will be coming. We just don't know which yet. Caleb, uh, where do you think this could go? Oh, I think it could go to a number amount of places, Andrew. But um, the main places we have been looking at, I think uh, just locate any old wooden roller coaster, and that place is a good... Uh, it's a good place for this new Titan track to be tested out. I mean, you got Predator at Darien Lake has also been one of the ones very much talked about. Um, but um, what other ones have been? I think uh, White Lightning has been rumored to get a full retrack instead of, or half retrack or something like that. Partially more retracked than it already has been. But um, other than that, uh, I don't really know of any that might get it. Uh, do you know of any that might get it, Andrew? I mean, yeah, uh, Predator, Darien Lake, I mean, who knows? I mean, what do you think about that? Ooh, 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 I think uh, Mind Blower might be a good, <laughs> might be a good no. <laughs> one for this treatment. <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, I mean, it's a gravity group, but like... It needs it, kind of. It's obviously, of course, not going to happen. This thing opened in 2017, but, like, come on. It, like, it needs it. Come on. Um, but still, uh, all of this, uh, I'm just so excited. These, this Titan track looks so good. Uh, obviously, we saw it with White Lightning. So I'm just so excited for, like, coasters, just like Predator, maybe a Darien Lake to get this. So uh, moving on to, yeah, we are already at our last bit of news. Um Cosmic Rewind, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, um, that thing just opened to uh, cast members at, um, it opened to cast members, uh, so they got to ride it, and some of the reviews have came in, obviously, uh, no spoilers, uh, they haven't said any spoilers, we won't be saying any spoilers uh, on this podcast, because we don't even know them, but uh, I heard like one review from one of my friends, and he was like, 
yo, the like the first half, I I can't believe this, but like he said, the first half is better than all of Rise of the Resistance. What do you think of that? I think it is definitely positive, as you know, Disney has topped themselves once again with proving that they are the master of theming. Yes, um, that has definitely been proven time and time again with Rise of the Resistance, Flight of Passage, and then Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind. And next we'll see Tron open up, which by the way, that has started testing, as we saw in footage. Yeah, that is true. That, that we kind of forgot to add though. That's a bitter, very, very big bitter news. Um, um, we haven't really seen that, but like, yeah, uh, I think the the only thing I saw, uh, was something from People Mover. I forgot who uh who filmed it. Who filmed it? Do you know? I don't know the first initial source, but I know a secondary source that reposted it. Uh, Coaster Hub on Instagram, I think reposted that it was testing. Along with uh, DSM Line Newscast, I think did a video on it. So did like all the major Disney like news coverage people did a video on it because this is just so groundbreaking news here. Yeah, I know. Like Tron, Tron like just looks to be so good. Obviously, there's the one in uh, Shanghai. I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, that one is looks absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'm just so excited for this. Like, but still, back to Guardians, like. For it being that good, like, from cast members, I am just so surprised. That thing, I'm not surprised because I know it looks to be good. Like, in my opinion, as I've said in previous episodes, this thing looks to be probably the best coaster in all of Disney World and just maybe one of the best rides. And from it, you know, uh, somebody saying, I'm, I mean, that's obviously one person who said it, so it's their opinion. But um, from them saying the the first half of it is better than all, like, Rise Resistance, which... Uh, if you like Rise of Resistance, if you're if it's your number one in Disney World, like that's just incredible to me. So, with that, I think probably the first half has some good theming. This ride really will pack in so much good stuff to it. It'll have the theming, the elements, the uh, everything looks so flipping cool. I'm so excited. Um, so, so yeah, uh, there's Guardians. I know we've been talking about this every episode of the podcast, but um, it's it's, it's really great that uh. That it's getting such good reviews. I'm so excited to ride this. Um, which obviously we have our times for when it's opening. So uh, for the pass holders, so well, um, I'm you, just super excited. You do at least. I do not. But um, I'm looking forward to this whenever it opens to the public, and we actually do get a POV of this. And uh, I think this could actually be one of the best Vacomas out there, as uh, just from those reviews. Um, even though it has a little bit of theming or a lot of bit of theming to it, uh, I think it could be uh, better than some of the new age Vacomas that we have seen, especially with that very fast backwards launch. You know, I think it has a lot of potential to be, as coaster-wise, it has a lot of potential to be one of the best. Yeah, uh, uh, just we're just so excited. I mean, I definitely think it'll be better than, like, some Vacomas. I mean, like, I think it probably could be the best Vacoma. I mean, I know there's some good ones, like, overseas, but, like, what could, like, possibly beat this? Like, the thrilling aspect and the overall experience will just be absolutely fantastic on this coaster. Imagine a backwards 60-mile-per-hour launch. Ooh, (laughs) that sounds incredible. I think that's what's going to happen with this new spinning technology that they call the Omni Coaster. I think definitely has a lot of potential to definitely take off especially with disney but just with other parks in general it has a big impact on the amusement industry if this blows up yeah yeah it, it's it's just like the mock um not omnivore one but like mock um and their spinning coasters those are fantastic so it'd be really cool to see that applied to just maybe a new concept so uh overall just so excited but moving on to our next segment this is going along with the intimate theme we are doing our top 10 u.s intimates or just intimates in general that we have written now um similar to the other ride rankings in the previous episodes um caleb and i don't have the exact number of uh 
rise away uh we've been caleb's only written apparently nine intimens so i'll i'll be doing my um top 10 he'll be doing his top nine so it's not that big of a difference but uh still uh, it'll be pretty close but um starting out um what i'll we'll basically do is i'll go do my number 10 i'll do my number nine and then we'll just do the normal format so starting out for my number 10 this is storm runner located at hershey park in hershey pennsylvania um storm runner is such a fantastic ride uh it's so good the launch from now get ready here we go that launch is flipping fantastic uh, it's one of the best launches i've ever done um there's that top hat great and there's some other really cool wacky elements uh like that cobra loop i think that's what it's called um there's that uh, flying snake dive which is absolutely incredible and this ride the even though it's super wacky it is still such a fantastic coaster but moving on to my number nine we have another Intamin launch coaster. This is Accelerator, located at Knott's Berry Farm. Um, similar to uh, Storm Runner, this thing has an absolutely incredible launch. Uh, this might just be in the top three launches I've ever done, uh, top five, whatever. Uh, this launch is so powerful, it's so sudden, and really Accelerator is just fantastic. It's really basically just a mini top fill dragster in King Ka. It is so flipping good, and I love this ride to bits. But Caleb... What is your number nine? My number nine is a very unique Intamin, per se. And not many people know it's an Intamin, but this is Escape from Gringotts, located at Universal Studios. Now, this, again, it's my number nine. So uh, I haven't ridden many Intamins, so this is at the very bottom. Coaster-wise, it's barely a roller coaster. I mean, it it's the same as, like, Journey to Atlantis or something like that. It's basically a dark ride with the slightest bit of roller coaster to qualify. So, uh, yeah, not much to say on this besides the theming is great. I mean, I love that theme. But, and uh, just the immersion in the Harry Potter world and the franchise of the Gringotts Bank scene in, what was it, the seventh one, I think it was, right? The seventh movie is where the, is where the ride no, takes it, place? I think it's the eighth movie, uh Deathly Hollows Part 2, I think that's it. That's at the very beginning, you know? Yeah, I think that's what I was referring to. But, um, yes, uh, I love this theme. Um, I mean, Deathly Hollows It's part universal, two, come on. Yeah, Deathly Hollows Part 2 is my second favorite uh, part of the Harry Potter franchise. My first favorite part is um, Goblet of Fire. So, uh, hmm. rip to dueling dragons right there. Yeah. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that theme of Dragon Challenge, uh, especially with the movie it was linked to. But anyway, getting back to this, um, yeah, it's like maybe like the tilt track is definitely the most unique aspect of the ride. Um, and it, I mean, Codaland, uh, when they announced their tilt track coaster uh, from Vacoma, uh, it turned a lot of heads because some people didn't even think about this as a roller coaster. So that's not technically the first tilt track roller coaster in the United States because Escape from Gringotts does have one. So, um, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely one to uh, ride whenever you're at Universal. Yeah, for sure. Um, such a fantastic ride. But uh, moving on to our number eight spots, um, my number eight, as you all know, I have a very, very bad quote unquote <laughs> uh, opinion but um this is pretty much my biggest unpopular opinion but coming in my number eight spot for just intimate coasters yeah that is el toro located at six flags great adventure now uh i feel like i still on this ranking have it ranked a little bit low but still uh you all know my opinion on el toro uh i definitely don't like it as much as some people i know some people have it as a number one so uh definitely not that in my opinion but still um El Toro is still, it's a solid ride, but it's just not as good as um, a lot of people say it is. But Caleb, what is your number eight? My number eight, again, saying that I haven't ridden many roller coasters here, uh, many Intamin coasters at least. My number eight is Incredicoaster at DCA. Now, DCA is not known for their roller coasters, but definitely Incredicoaster is one that is... 
you know, it's it's definitely a nice change from all of the uh, nice uh, rides that Disney has. And Credicoaster is just one that kicks it up a little bit. I mean, it's not very much wilder, but hey, it's uh, it's something from uh, Intamin. Definitely created a masterpiece of this one. And whenever it was rethemed from California Screaming to the Incredicoaster, definitely brought a nice change to that. And definitely fit in with the Disney bubble uh, compared to what uh, Disney is doing right now. They are taking their old rides out that don't have any real Disney aspect to them and just, you know, making a little spin on it. And I love that about it. I mean, I loved Incredicoaster whenever I went, so uh, definitely as a solid eight. Um, not Andrew's eight, but it's, uh, it's a number eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but still, uh, still, I love Incredicus. It's such a great ride, but now we have another highly themed attraction coming in at my number seven. This is Haggard's Magical Creatures Mode or Bike Adventure located at Islands of Adventure. Something like maybe a ride tomorrow, but hey, um, but still, um, this thing is so flipping good. I love Haggard's. No, it's a little bit high. Um, some people may think it's a little bit high, uh, Caleb, if you've ridden as many coasters as I have, you will definitely think it's high. But um, yeah, Hagrid's such a fantastic ride, uh, though it does stop a lot throughout the course and ride cycle. Um, I definitely still love this ride so much. The theming is fantastic and all the elements put together is just makes this ride so, so good. But Caleb, what's your number seven? So my number seven is Wicked Twister at Cedar Point. Yeah, I know. Rip to that. Um Definitely was sad seeing this thing removed as this was actually one of my dad's favorite rides at Cedar Point, which was surprising to me. But uh, hey, as a uh, hyper roller coaster, you know, even though it never probably really reached that height, it still was uh, pretty impressive. I love the ride itself. I mean, it's it's pretty it's a pretty good ride and I'm surprised Cedar Point took it out, but I'm excited to see what replaces it. Uh, what do you think about that, Andrew? Um, obviously, uh, with these rumors, uh, there's definitely a lot of like rumors out there. Uh, what the biggest one that comes to mind for me is you know that little boardwalk thing. You know, like they have a boardwalk goes under the ocean. Uh, I've always thought that maybe a Gersal or your fighter would be pretty cool. Probably won't happen. The capacity is not that good on that thing. But what do you think, Caleb? I think a Gersal or Infinity Coaster might be a better option for that area. Exactly. <laughs> Instead of a Gerslauer Eurofighter, make it an Infinity Coaster, and there you go. I know, like like an Infinity Coaster, something like Monster, or, or even Hang Time, uh, especially Hang Time because that has a higher capacity. If they like cycle trains like super fast, I could definitely see this being such a great fit. Uh, I'll, like branching off a little bit, um, another fit. Like I remember I went to Cedar Point in 2019, and I was I was in the back section of the park, and I was like I was like hmm. Wouldn't it be really cool if they added a GCI? Now, I made a video of this, I think, but um, imagine just a GCI. This park really needs a really good wooden coaster. So imagine if they added a GCI in the back section of the park. Um, I've always thought a layout similar to Mystic Timbers would be good. So um, I have thought maybe they just maybe run it along that little river, you know, take out um, the slingsh or what, whatever that sky coaster thing. Uh, I feel like that'd be cool. Take up the sky coaster and maybe just have like long running across the river. Don't you think that'd be a cool idea? I think it would be a cool idea. But what happens whenever it like floods? Like if the if the uh, beach floods at all, the wooden track would definitely rot. So there would need to be a whole lot of maintenance in order to uh, make that happen. Well, think about Steel Vengeance. That's wood. Yes, but it's not right up against the river. Or the the beach. Well, the, think about Cedar Creek Mine Rides would. Yeah, well, they... Uh, that goes in the water. <laughs> yeah, I know it does, but, uh, you know, you never know what could happen. When you realize that you're... <laughs> the way you just said is not the best. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I know. My argument was made flawed there. Or fraud. <laughs> I, I just feel like it would be such a cool fit, though, like... This park really needs a really good wooden coaster. I mean, they don't like they have Blue Streak, but in my opinion, it's not the best. And Blue Streak's the only like pure wooden coaster they have. Like, 
some really nice, like super good GCI Woody, I think that would be so, so good. Like, and I, like, I was back there, I was like, this would fit so well. And I felt like I could just, I could just feel like someday it's going to be going over the pathway. It'll be really cool. But I mean, I just, I don't you agree? I think it'd just be super cool. Yeah, I think it would be cool too. Although they had their chance with Mean Streak when they tore that down. I think they could have put a wooden coaster there too. Although, uh, yeah, I don't know. They might have learned their lesson from just the rough nature of Mean Streak and uh, maybe not try it again. But uh, I don't think a layout compared to Mystic Timbers would be the type of ride they would choose because I don't know if the space is good enough for that. Well, yeah, it, it, we'll just have to see, but imagine, or they could just take out Cedar Creek Mine Ride and maybe, just maybe put a GCI, but have like some Titan Track on it where it can go upside down and have those Infinity Fire trains. Uh, that would be so cool. I think it would be too. And we were just talking about a, uh, a GCI Titan Track there. So, uh, you know, maybe Cedar Point could be the one getting one. You never know maybe that's always an option but uh moving on to my number seven no no what is it is it is it your seven i i'm totally lost we're at six what is it? okay so my, sorry about that we got a little unscripted there but we mine got a little six, unprofessional there yeah sorry about that but yeah my number six is king de Ka, the first of the two intimate stratas to make this list um Dude, I love these coasters so much. Stratas are just absolutely incredible. You probably already know it's taking my number five, but um, these Stratas are just so, so good. Uh, King of the Cause, no exemption. Uh, though it may be just a slightest bit rough, it's really, un- you can no- you can notice it a little bit, but you can really go past that and just know how good this ride is. And even though it just has uh, those over-the-shoulder restraints, it's still just such a good ride. The view is fantastic. And the thrill of these stratas, including Top Little Dragster, um, is just so good. And King Daka is just such a fantastic ride. But Caleb, what is your number six? My number six is going to be Hagrid's Long Name Coaster. Um, we've already touched on Hagrid's, and the storytelling of Hagrid's is just so amazing. I can't believe Universal did that, and it is one of the best coasters in Orlando, besides, you know, the one next star. Uh, We won't spoil it now. Yeah, I mean, I think we already know what that is, but uh, we already went through this. Hagger is such a fantastic ride. Anything else you have to say? Seven launches on this ride. Seven. I know. Long ride. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, anything else to say? Is that Nope. I'm being <laughs> well, so <but> unprofessional <laughs> right now. <laughs> we're just going back and forth. We're going um, unscripted. But... No, that's yeah. what we're doing. I mean, that is the name of the podcast, but not my number five. Uh, as we just said, Top of Dragster, another instrument strata. The experience of this thing is incredible. I love this ride so much. It is so just insane and everything about it is just so fantastic but what is your number five caleb my number five is the other intamin blitz the original intamin blitz that was in florida now we got three wow um but my number five is going to be cheetah hunt at bush gardens tampa now we've already touched on cheetah hunt in this podcast already so if you haven't you know heard our reviews on cheetah hunt go watch the or go listen to the other episodes of this podcast and you'll know what we think about cheetah hunt so i'm gonna leave it right there yes i like well what are they doing like these opinions like short or long you know yeah yes but um moving on to our number four spots we're really getting into the good stuff uh my number four is sky rush located at hershey park now um, this may just be a little low compared to some other people, but um, Sky Rush is such an adrenaline rush. It is absolutely fantastic from start to finish. Um, once you're listening to this, you probably already saw my top 25. If you're looking at that stuff, uh, my top 25 releases this Friday, so it's not out by re- the recording of this podcast, but it will be out when this podcast is released this Sunday. But like I said, uh, pretty much all these like really good coasters on the Intamin list are in my top 25, so I gave recaps on that, but... um. Sky Rush, 
so it's such a fantastic ride it feels like a train wreck then that drop to the airtime hills to everything about it it is absolute madness such an insane ride and the experience going with this is fantastic i know uh, some people may not like the restraints but i actually like these which you know they do crush you a little bit but i actually like these because they give you so much room well i mean I, I some people may not like them but i actually like them which is a very big unpopular opinion but <laughs> Um, there's that, but Caleb, what is your number four? My number four, uh, which I'm surprised isn't in Andrew's top tw or top ten Intamins, is Millennium Force. Now, this is the original Giga Coaster. So, you know, I I love this coaster. Like, it is super forceful, super fast, and it has such good airtime moments. Just, it is just awesome. The way it dominates over the Cedar Point skyline. I mean, I did this thing in the dead fog. Like, you couldn't see a thing. And so whenever you're 300 feet in the air, see, looking over, and you just can't see the track below you that you just went through, and whenever you're looking up in the back row and you're just getting flung into the abyss, it's such an experience that, you know, I think everybody has to experience. It is definitely one of the better experiences at Cedar Point riding Millennium Force in the fog. Yeah, uh, speaking of like coasters that I like that didn't make my list, uh, Millennium Force didn't make my list. It's still a good coaster, just not as good to make my list. But uh, something I was debating on putting in, but I guess I just didn't put it in. Uh, that is Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England, which uh, going along with Superman, you do have those restraints, which for me at least, those restraints really do kill the ride. I mean, the layout is good, but the restraints just hurt your legs. Those are probably one of the like the, my least favorite restraints. So. I feel like Six Flags New England has a history of bad restraints. <laughs> you know, like Superman, Goliath, don't you agree? Yes, but they do have that one on the Riddler that is uh, pretty good for an SLC restraint. For an SLC restraint, but it's still not that good. It's not the one at Maurice Pierce. That is so true. <laughs> but moving on to our top three. My number three is Maverick as we head over to the good old Wild West. Uh, Maverick is unreal it is so so just fantastic i cannot say enough good about this ride it really has everything you can want it has the launches the speed uh the great whip the airtime the inversions uh, the intensity it is so good it has everything you can want um the experiences the experience you get with this thing is so good i've had so many good experiences with this including the night rides and it's definitely one of the best coasters in the wild west and in frontier town but caleb what is your number three going back to the old west uh we're going to maverick at cedar point in the frontier town section of cedar point now Andrew just touched on this ride, but this ride is just super snappy, super whippy. I just, I love rides like that. Just the fast, intense, you know, side to side transitions. Those snaps are fantastic, give a bunch of airtime. And this ride just has loads of airtime. And I love going from almost zero to like 70 miles per hour in that tunnel and then going straight into that turn into those, uh, into those trims. Um, <laughs> We all love trim brakes, don't we? Uh, sure, yeah, sure. We definitely love trim brakes. <laughs> yes, if they could have only put enough on Maverick to get that Heartline roll in there. I know. Oh man, I know. I I wish I had that. That's one of the, like the experiences I just want to love to experience. But the closest the closest we get to that uh, Heartline roll is the Mosasaurus roll. Yeah. Uh, I. That's a really good debate. Like, what do you think was better, the Mosasaurus or the Heartline roll? I think, um, that's tough. Honestly, I honestly think I would have liked them both equally. I, I personally think, even though uh, Maverick's Heartline roll looks absolutely incredible, I feel like it would have just gone too fast through it to really make it a world like top-notch element. It looks, it looks absolutely fantastic. But I feel like the Mosasaurus roll really gives you airtime, not really airtime, but like hanging, the hanging feeling as you go through it. So I feel like the Mosasaurus roll, you know, at least in my opinion, probably is just a little bit better. Don't you agree? Yeah, uh, I don't think that. But um, I think if Maverick had that Heartline roll 
and you got to ride it multiple times, especially if you rode it like first thing in the morning, I feel like it still would have given you great airtime and still great whip, but you would have gotten to experience it a whole lot better. Like if you went straight to Maverick for uh, early morning, uh, for the early morning thing, or early morning hours or whatever they call it at Cedar Point, I think it definitely could have been as good as the Mosasaurus roll. And the Mosasaurus yeah. roll on that on that one gives you like it's such good whip on that element and then the airtime on it is also fantastic and some hang time too. I mean, it just I just can't describe the Mosasaurus roll. It's like you I'll describe it as best I can. It's like you go through the first half, it's like a normal zero G roll. But then the second half feels like it's just gonna like violently throw you from your seat um it's it's a feeling i can't really describe within words other than that that is my best description of the mosasaurus roll would you agree andrew oh yeah yeah mosasaurus roll is my favorite version i've ever done but uh comparing that back to the maverick one the heartline roll uh i feel like the maverick heartline roll is if you've ridden Max Force, you know that there is the uh, world's fastest inversion. I think it does it still hold that record. Do you know? Yeah, I think it still holds that record. Yeah, but uh, I still the thing is with that inversion, the way I don't like it as much as I feel like I should is even though it's still an absolutely fantastic inversion, I feel like you just go through fast through it, which goes along with the theme of going fast through inversions. So that really gives like background to why mm, I don't think the inversion on Maverick would be as good uh, as the Mosasaurus roll, but it's just my opinion. So uh, moving on to our number two spots, my number two is the most intense coaster in the world, an absolute adrenaline rush of a coaster. This is Intimidator. 305 located at king's dominion in Dusville, virginia this as i said most intense coaster in the world what else can you say uh the whip the intensity the height is just so good on this thing it is insane you go 305 feet up in the air and then you just dive plummet through all these low to the ground elements which is just madness this ride is pure insanity the whip absolutely incredible parts about this coaster is just so top notch and that is why it's one of the best coasters i've ever ridden and taking the number two spot on my intimate list but caleb what is your number two my number two is probably the most exhilarating ride experience i've ever had personally and it's the only strata i have ridden and that is top thrill dragster Yes, I am just ready to go on this coaster whenever it opens back up. You see what I did there, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to incorporate that in there. But um, yes, uh, this ride just, it's such an adrenaline rush. It is the best thing you can have as an enthusiast on this ride. Just having a little lap bar too, whenever you ride it, it just is, I mean, going 120 miles per hour and going up that high in the air i don't think that experience is matched on any other roller coaster now the experience can't be matched but the ride can be obviously because we both have coasters above it uh but yeah what is your number one though andrew my number one is both of our number ones let's just do a <laughs> we could pretty much just do a group combined effort that is Velocicoaster, located at Universal Islands of Adventure. Uh, what else is there to say? Caleb, you want to take this one on? Yeah, um, I kind of messed up. I didn't intend to say Top Thrill Dragster on that one. That's I what I was thinking. I saw it on my thing, and I was like, oh, gosh. What did I do as soon as I said it? But I just rolled with it. But, yeah, Velocicoaster is actually my number two. Dragster is my number one. I'm sorry. I'm a Dragster fanboy. But, um... Uh, <laughs> unprofessionalism i know it's unprofessional but i i just i just can't i can't live with it you know uh <laughs> it's the right opinion i know it's it's an unpopular opinion but it's an opinion of mine so you know i'm going with velocicoaster number two dragster is my number one but yes velocicoaster let's touch on this one uh velocicoaster is just it is insane the first half definitely could have used some improving upon with that launch. The first launch could have been better, I feel like. Eh, eh. 
the the layout of the first half you know it's good uh those two inversions in the first half definitely are the highlights of the first half don't you agree andrew i mean yeah pretty i i would tend to agree yeah yeah those uh the dive loop and immelman both give you some great airtime, which is surprising for those two elements because normally they don't like immelmans are meant to be like very forceful especially like the one on shikra I think of or dive coasters whenever I think of Immelmans you know I think of those coasters and those ones are very very forceful uh, especially if you're sitting in the back I think it's back right that gives isn't it uh, I think yeah I think it is but uh, yeah and the dive loop just I don't know what it is but as soon as you're entering into the element it's like a little like yank sort of that's the best way i could describe it or like a yeet moment on the ride um but yeah velocicoaster just it's the full package that's all i can say about it it has theming airtime intensity inversions um universal yeah. <laughs> that's all i gotta it say has, about it it has universal i mean universal is like the best at like, well combining thrill and theming i would Definitely say the Universal is the best at it. Like they have Velocicoaster, Hagrids, um, with coasters overseas, and everything Universal does with like high, like themed, like and intense coasters. They just do so masterpieces at it. Uh, Velocicoaster really is a masterpiece. Uh, I know we've touched upon this before, but uh, there's so much to like about it. Uh, from that first half, I actually think the first half is still really, really good. Um, I don't know about you, but the first half has like such really good element i mean it obviously has that emelman that dive loop and but also one really underrated element i think in my opinion of that first half is that really a uh, very good uh, ejector moment right after uh that dive loop don't you agree yeah i would say it's definitely underrated but i mean you know i still think the dive loop and emelman are definitely my favorite parts of that first half yeah, definitely. Like especially on that Emelman, like if you're sitting in the back seat, like you'll get whipped. It is so good, and the airtime on that like dive loop is so fantastic. Uh, really, like once Velocicoaster opened, like I remember being there for the opening because like it, it really gained just a huge fan base, and it was probably like what like other than like some just maybe Steel Vengeance or something like that. Uh, once this thing opened, this was like one of the most loved coasters out there everybody who rode it loved it i mean i even remember riding this the first day it was open to pass holders because uh funny story um i'll go off a little bit going unscripted but um it's a very funny story back in april of 2021 actually a year ago probably about now um i feel i feel i i haven't shared this yet because uh I think I just now heard, uh, found out that you can share because uh, it was previously confidential. But since since Veloc Coaster is open and has been open for a while, I can finally share this. But um, some really cool thing I did: we did a commercial shoot. We got invited by Universal uh, from Ace uh, Florida, so we got invited to this commercial shoot. Uh, we got to go to Veloc Coaster. Um, it was so fun. We woke up at two a.m. Uh, I got to meet some friends there. We drove to Veloc Coaster at four a.m. because Pretty much, we were doing just a commercial shoot, and we got to. I mean, wh when I went in, I was like, "Ooh, I get to ride this!" And it was so I was so excited. Uh, but the whole story about this, and I definitely have witnesses because I I met friends there. Um, but we went there, and the whole uh, event, the whole day, even though we got there, we were there from like four to three. Um, we were not able to ride it, so obviously it was super unfortunate. So we went there, uh, weren't able to ride it, which, as I said, were, was unfortunate. But funny story, my dad actually got to ride it. Um, I, like I, even though I'm the coast enthusiast and stuff, like my dad got to ride it twice, which I was a little frustrated about. Um, but you know, since uh, that it was, it was I think it was because we were under 18, we weren't allowed to do it. So uh, it was really frustrating, but still, it was a, it's definitely a funny experience to look back on. Uh, but since then, we did get to um, get to ride this thing on the first day, um, pass holder preview. So we were, we were like the first time to ride it. And boy, like it just made such a good impression on me. And Velocicoaster has had a, a huge place in my heart. I know it's the same for you, Caleb. 
Yeah, it is the same for me. And my first experience on Velocicoaster was interesting as well because that was the day that, you know, I I was that was my first trip to Universal in like three years or something like that. And so I was saving up a lot of money to be able to go. And so and so I bought my uh, annual pass in June of last year. And uh, I can't believe it's been that long. But um, yeah, it was a really like overcast day. So we just went straight to Velocicoaster, waited in line. And then they said, like when we were at the lockers, they said that they were going to shut down due to weather or that they had like a weather notice. So we were like, we were trying to get on. Like I was with Andrew too. And uh, we were trying to get on and... uh, So whenever we were in the station, they announced, oh, we're closed due to a weather delay, but they were still loading trains. So we were like, we better get on the next train. And so we got on in the back row. We were going to wait for the front for my first ride, but we decided to go for the back since it was going to close due to a weather delay. And so we got on the ride, and by the time we got off, they were closed due to a weather delay. And then the rest of the night, it just rained all night long. And that kind of sucks, but, you know, it made our day better because, you know, we did, after Velocicoaster, we did uh, Forbidden Journey. We uh, insanely ran over to the train in the pouring down rain. It is, like, completely torrential at this point. We run to the Hogwarts Express and get our cameras and stuff wet. Um, Such an interesting day. And then once we got off the Hogwarts Express... It's like maybe like 30 minutes to close. So we like book it to Mummy <laughs> to try to get two rides on Mummy before the night ended. Unfortunately, yeah. because the uh, the line was moving as slow as molasses, we only got one ride, but it was still an awesome day, especially walking back to the car with uh, some really wet shoes. <laughs> oh, I remember that day so fondly. That was, uh, even though, like, it was raining, like, it was, I remember it was just absolutely pouring. It was just so fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> was, uh, it definitely was a very memorable day. Yeah, and you got your first ride, so that's what matters. But, uh, speaking of Intamin, let's move on to a ride opinion. We kind of already touched on this coaster, uh, and the, uh, ride ranking, but this is Maverick. Uh, we already went through this. Uh, Maverick is such a fantastic ride, but uh, this is our ride opinion. So, um, for its overall score, as we always do with a ride opinion, uh, my overall score for this ride, come on, 10 out of 10. What else would you say? Maverick is so good. And for my rank, uh, obviously another another plug for my YouTube channel. You'll see this on my top 25. Uh, but Maverick has taken my number 14th spot, which... Um, just another plug. I'm just gonna say, just go check out my top 25. It's it premieres on, uh, it premiered Friday, which from you listening, it already happened. But still, go give it a watch. Uh, some of you may have already watched it, but yeah, just a little plug. But Caleb, what about you? So whenever I heard you, I think about your one video that you showed me on TikTok about Mako, where you're like, <laughs> where you're like talking really fast, and then you're like, this ride's 10 out of 10. Come on. <laughs> I know. I started a TikTok. Another plug. Go. F- <laughs> no, I'm joking. But still, I did start a TikTok. Go look at that. But continue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for me, this is a 10 out of 10. Yes, I I rank it perfectly. I don't think there is anything that could have made this ride better besides that Heartline roll. Definitely would have been a an interesting experience to say the least. But um, yeah. So uh, in my ranking, it is number seven. And I just have it right above the old OG wooden lightning rod. That's that's uh, old lightning rod. I definitely think was a little bit better, just because I think it is a little bit more aggressive. I think it packs a whole lot more into its layout, but or into its very short layout. Um, I think just Maverick is missing. Uh, something to it i don't know what it is i think it's that heartland world that could have made something so much better um i i i just think it is missing a little something i don't know what it is really besides you know maybe another inversion would do it um but yeah don't you agree andrew i mean i actually would tend to disagree i think this coaster is pretty much perfect the way it is but um 
have anything else to say about Maverick? Uh, just this coaster is just so good. It's so much fun. Um, I think about whenever I whenever I go on like Velocicoaster's launch, which is forty to seventy miles per hour on that second launch, I just think of Maverick's like insane second launch. Whenever I go through that, um, I think Maverick's launch is a little bit better because it's going from basically a dead stop to to uh, what is it like sixty five miles per hour or seventy miles per hour? I don't really remember what it is. But um, yeah, I just yeah. love that acceleration, especially in the front row with the wind blowing in your face. And, you know, it's such an exhilarating experience to have that uh, that type of yeah. coaster at Cedar Point. It's small but mighty. Yes, that is so true. It really just packs a huge punch. But uh, that is it for the Riot Opinion. Uh, obviously, uh, we love Riot Opinion. Uh, it's pretty much our little uh, ride reviews of the coasters. But Moving on to our next segment, uh, we introduced this segment, uh, the last podcast, but Caleb, we want to take this one on? Yeah, so this is Reimagined, and so for this week's Reimagined, we have SeaWorld Orlando as Kraken and JTA re-theme, er- re-theme that area, and we went with a shipwreck theme of the area. Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to take this one on? Yeah, you go ahead and take the rest. Yes. Uh, I uh, Shout out to uh, Christian from Theme Park Horizons. Uh, go check him out. Uh, we pretty much just went through this, and we just thought of this. But um, I would definitely give half or even full credit to this for his opinion. But imagine this. SeaWorld Orlando goes full-on creative mode. They take this whole area. Uh, they take out Turtle Trek. Um, they take out uh, Empire of the Penguin or just retheme Turtle Trek, or uh, retheme Empire of the Penguin, uh, retheme some of these other rides, and they retheme this whole area. And they retheme it to like a shipwreck and with sea monsters. And I'm going off, I'm going unscripted because this would just be such a cool idea. It's not going to happen. It's SeaWorld, but they go with this whole area just with some thoughts of that. Um, just the shipwreck theme of the area. Um, let's start with Turtle Trek. Uh, imagine this. They take out Turtle Trek or just retheme it, either option, um, and they go with a very, very awesome dark ride. Either it be interactive shooter or something like that. It got to be detailed. It's got to be so good. Just They make a whole dark ride theme to you being in a shipwreck, and you going along, you go underwater, and the main villain of the whole story is just a huge water um, sea monster. And you fight along that, have some really cool scenes, some cool short and dark rides. And it would really add so much to the park. Like, it would add a great new dark ride for this uh, park. And it would just be so cool. So, uh, Turtle Trek obviously needs uh, something new about it. So, uh, Turtle Trek is definitely a good place to start, even if they don't work theme the rest of the area. So, there's that. Um, it will go through the shipwreck. They um, just. Imagine this, and they also had just a huge like prop, a huge shipwreck in the whole area. Wouldn't that be so cool? Yeah, I think it would be sick to see that happen. And I think the idea of Turtle Trek being rethemed, you may ask, well, what about all those animals in Turtle Trek, like the manatees and stuff? They could relocate those to like Bush Gardens, Tampa, or maybe you know, because That's I know Bush Gardens. I know, I know. Disney and SeaWorld have like a relationship, so maybe ship or maybe uh, move them over to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Maybe if they really need a home, I I think Disney would be open arms to that idea. Uh, just to have more animals around Animal Kingdom. I mean, yeah. Uh, even though Animal Kingdom is more of like an animal park, um, it would be still be fine. I feel like they'll take them out or just give them to any other corporation or something. Uh, but that would be so cool. They have a huge prop. That'd be so cool. Uh, you fight a sea monster, all of that. But then you could also retheme Kraken and Journey to Atlantis. Now, I know Kraken was just uh, repainted. Uh, but still, maybe they could keep that color scheme, keep the theming, and really add so much detail. Uh, obviously, the biggest thing about all of this would be Journey to Atlantis being rethemed. So I feel like with the layout Journey to Atlantis already has, they could do so much with it, including the indoor section. 
They could add so much theming. So cool. I mean, this is really is what Reimagined is. We're going unscripted, going off on all of the creative ideas we have. Um, once again, shout out to Christian from the Bark Horizons. <laughs> but there's all of that. Um, and this could all be like an adventure theme. It would be so cool. And maybe with this new land, they could build new flats, new rides. Uh, just make it more lively with the rides. And I, I even for a new coaster, like they could take out Empire of the Penguin. Uh, maybe build like a wing coaster or something. I know B and M's. There's already a lot of B and M's in this park, but uh, maybe just add a new coaster there. Like they could rename it. Like I like here's a cool name, like the Lost Adventure or something. I don't know. Something would just be so cool here. I know Seal is not gonna do it, but um, they could just if they did went full on Disney like creative mode or Universal creative mode. They could do so much with this area, and I think it would be so cool. It's definitely not going to happen, but uh, just something to think about. What do you think about, Caleb? Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Andrew. And I think one of the things they could do is definitely expand the layout of Journey to Atlantis. Uh, maybe like add something new and refreshing, like maybe like an airtime hill here and there. Uh, like whenever you're going through the, uh, whenever you're going through that roller coaster section, you know maybe add something else to it maybe change that layout of that one roller coaster section to like you know maybe be a little bit longer um just add something to it you know what i mean yeah well i mean is this even possible like what if they did what if like disney and SeaWorld did a collaboration would that be possible uh i don't think so uh, I think SeaWorld, SeaWorld and Disney is Disney. The only thing that they would collaborate on is for, like, conservation stuff and whatnot. That type of stuff they would. I've actually seen posts about them partnering up together to do those types of things. But as far as, like, a collaboration for, like, rides and creative stuff like that, no. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Probably wouldn't happen, but still, like, I think this would be so cool, like... Uh, maybe not a new coaster in this area because, I mean, if there was a new coaster, there'll be three coasters or even four coasters with Manta in this tight space. So, uh, I don't really think that would, uh, be as likely, but some flats and some rethemes and a nice dark ride. I feel like that can add so much more lively of an atmosphere to this part of the section of the park. But do you have any other thoughts on this, Caleb? No, I think we uh, touched on everything I would do to it. Um, maybe also while you're at it, maybe like touch up theming on Mako and, and like maybe incorporate some more shark stuff over there. Yeah. Maybe like or just repaint it. Uh, yeah, it definitely does need a repaint, but maybe like uh, maybe like put whenever you repaint it, put maybe like um, like instead of you know those like you have a giant wall in the queue. Like, where you're right up the stairs, right next to the stairs, you have, like, a TV screen on that wall. I think that would be a perfect place to put something good or next to it. Or, like, in that general vicinity, maybe put, like, a shark tank or something like that. Like, a shark yeah. exhibit somewhere in the queue for Mako would be absolutely perfect. I think that would just really touch up the theming and the landscape. It would go perfect with the ride. And yeah, yeah, that would be a great idea to do. Yeah, I definitely don't think they would repaint Mako like to a new color, but just repainting with the same old colors. And as you said, with all of that, uh, a new another Shark Tank, even though it's right down the uh, right down the pathway, would be still really cool because uh, that's what Mako is. Maybe even have some. Well, that, that's impossible. Imagine just a Mako shark, like a huge Mako shark, but that would make the definition of captivity. So uh, I don't think that would happen, but. Um, I think that's it for Reimagined. Moving on to our next segment. This is our second to final segment. Um, and this is the infamous unpopular opinion. Caleb, what is your unpopular opinion? My unpopular opinion is that Primeval World is good. Yeah, um, I said it. Primeval World was actually decently good. I liked it. I mean, I love the spinning aspect of it. I, I said before, I'm a sucker for spinning coasters. I love me them spinners, you know, and uh, I thought Primeval War was a pretty good ride. I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's a clone. Uh, 
And I, I, I just don't know how I feel about these. I'm just trying to, like, take it in. I don't know how I feel about these type of rides. Like, there's Galaxy Spin, there's Primeval Whirl. I'm not sure they're the best, in my opinion. Uh, but it really depends on what coasters you like. I mean, Caleb, you like spinning coasters. I mean, I definitely like um, the Mauer. I think that's what it is, spinning coasters. Like, a Laugh Track, a Spider, a Lagoon. Uh, that's a really good one. I know, Caleb, you haven't done those too, but I think those are way better than, like, the Wild Mass ones. Like, but still, Primeval World, I think it was fine. I didn't hate it. I definitely didn't hate it, but um, I, I know I, de I d didn't hate it like some people do. I really was not understanding of why some people, like, hated it, but still. Um, that's why it's an unpopular opinion, after all. But uh, moving on to my unpopular opinion, um, you know, I still got some more unpopular opinions coming. Phantom's Revenge, located at Kennywood. Um, if you saw my top 25, another plug, didn't make it. So, <laughs> that say, being said, Phantom's Revenge, in my opinion, is not a top 25 coaster, which um, I, know, I still like it, but I feel like the elements aren't good enough. And the, I mean, I get the restraints are really free, but I feel like even the restraints aren't good enough to where this ride is absolutely incredible. I mean, uh, there is that huge drop, but really then just a tiny pop at the top of it in the back seat um it's really just straight and i know there's two other or maybe three other little ejector pops i feel like that doesn't really make up for this thing being a top 25 coaster and i feel like it's not as good as some people may say uh but what do you think about that caleb yeah i think phantom's revenge uh definitely looks very elite i should say that dive into the ravine looks insane uh, and just doing that from a hyper coaster height, being taller than the actual first drop, uh, having an element like that, and those tiny little ejector pops definitely looks, uh, it, it's on my bucket list, that's what I'll say. It's it's one for the bucket list. Yeah, I know, you, like, isn't this ranked, like, in your top five bucket list coasters? I wouldn't say it's top five. I mean, I have, maybe we'll save this for another episode of the podcast. Maybe that's actually a good idea. A bucket list. Yeah, we should do that next episode, don't you think? Yeah, I think we should. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, well, something to write down. But uh, that's it for unpopular opinion. But our last segment of the episode, Caleb, do you want to take this one on? Yep, the ride bracket. Yes, and so we are finishing off with the intimate theme here. And we are doing our top two. Now, we are doing exactly what I said in the last podcast because we thought it was a brilliant idea. Um, and we are going to let you guys vote on it because we think we would unanimously vote one of these coasters. But we wanted you guys to have a little bit more say in this. So uh, we're going to allow yeah. you guys to vote for this because, you know, we don't want to end this too early. Right? I know. I know, right? But... The two coasters that came out on top. Let's go through the matchups. Uh, our first matchup was Velocicoaster versus Storm Runner. Storm Runner is eliminated. So Velocicoaster uh, took on Storm Runner. So then here's our other vote El Toro versus Maverick. Now, uh, Maverick. Oh, wow. Maverick. Yeah, Maverick is hmm. out. It is out. <laughs> so Maverick is eliminated. Uh, it was so close. I, I was so surprised how close this was. But um, the vote was 53 Velocicoaster, 47 Maverick. So, uh, no, not Velocicoaster. What am I saying? El Toro. Uh, so El Toro came out to on top over Maverick. So what pretty much is the generally thought top two of Intamins in Velocicoaster and El Toro is the final matchup of the ride bracket for U.S. Intamin Coasters. So as Caleb said, uh, we are going to do this on our Instagram. So make sure to go on to the Coaster Thrills Instagram account once this thing is uploaded. And just be quick because you got to make sure uh, what is better. Um, uh, that is Velocicoaster versus El Toro. I know both of us, uh, we like Velocicoaster better. Uh, Caleb hasn't ridden El Toro. No, I have not. But again, it's on the bucket list. I know, that's definitely top for you, but um, yeah, obviously for me, Velocicoaster is way better, so 
Uh, so we already know the Velocicoaster would win for both of us. So I would vote Velocicoaster if I were you, but um, I feel like if we did that, very easy, just quick and throughout. So it wouldn't be as entertaining, but, uh, you know, we're still brainstorming stuff for the ride bracket um, for the next episode. We're going to probably start a new bracket by the next time this that goes on. I mean, we have so many ideas, but I think that's it. I think we should uh, end out the episode, don't you think, Caleb? Yes, and thank you guys for listening all the way through this episode. And uh, make sure to uh, follow me on Instagram at Backyard Thrills. And follow Andrew on Insta at Coaster Thrills, and also all of his links are in. If you're watching this on YouTube, all of his links should be around there somewhere. Um, yeah, and uh, yes, I'll, I'll, so. I'll, I'll, I'll give you all a reference. <laughs> yeah, here it is. It is link tr dot ee slash Coaster Thrills. I actually memorized that. Yes, uh, how fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Caleb, you should make one for you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty busy. So whenever I got the time, I will. It's pretty fast. It's only like five minutes. Like seriously. Yeah, but sometimes I don't have five minutes. Yeah, that's true. But that'll be the end for the podcast. So I hope you all enjoyed. As Caleb said, uh, got lots more coming for this podcast so stay tuned we're about halfway through season one so stay tuned for what's to come uh what should and... be oh never nope don't end it yet oh, no okay what <laughs> i'm asking what should be our next bracket i don't hmm <laughs> maybe we should let the viewers vote on this one. Oh, um should we I think we should. Maybe I'll post it to whenever this episode comes out. Maybe our ideas for the next bracket I'll put out on my Instagram, you know, because I haven't been too involved in this. Um, Let's do both Instagrams. I think okay. that'll be better. Or the Coasters Unscripted Podcast Instagram. I think that's more like it. <laughs> yes. But uh, we'll put it out there for the next bracket challenge as to what you guys would prefer. Uh, we're, we'll just consolidate our ideas for the next one. Uh, we have a whole lot of them. So RMC, uh, RMC, BNM, um, Benvari. Or Disney. We could do Disney rides. Yeah, we could do that. I mean, again, there's, or Universal for that matter too. I mean, there's a whole bunch of ideas we could do, but we're going to let you guys vote on which one you prefer. Okay. Now is the time to end it. Any final thoughts? <laughs> You're really we're going unscripted. <laughs> but this is uh, wait, so uh, unprofessional. Uh, I know. Let me think of a word. Um, Coke. Uh, that's your word. Um, the word hockey, of the day. Wait, hockey gloves. Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay, we got our word of the day. So you ready to end it now? Unprofessionalism. <laughs> Yes, my name is Unprofessionalism. <laughs> so true. But yes, that will end the episode. Who's going to uh, end it? Already... Me, the host. <laughs> no, I was joking. No, the co host. Uh, no. no, the ho no, Okay, we're being so. We'll end it together. <laughs> All right. Okay, you do the outro, I'll do the Ansia. All right. I think I already did it. Okay, we'll just do it again. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys for uh, listening to this very unprofessional podcast we have here. Um, it's been a fun one to make. I mean, I'm laughing hysterically as we are doing this and trying to hold it back. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have really enjoyed making this podcast. Um, we got a couple more episodes till we end the season out. So yeah, uh, we're really excited to uh, bring you the rest of the episodes and uh, make sure to, again, follow the Coasters Unscripted Podcast Instagram. Follow my Instagram at Backyard Thrills and Andrew's Instagram at Coaster Thrills. And see ya. <laughs>